The house is really coming along. It's been really fun working on the finishing details. This week we're installing two barn doors in the master bedroom area. We're keeping costs low by restoring two matching vintage doors that we found. These sliding doors will free up space in our modest sized home and look amazing whether they're open or closed. We start by installing the rails and I'm working on the one for the master bedroom leading into the master bath. It came pre-drilled with holes on 16 inch centers, but they didn't line up with all my studs correctly so I'm having to re-drill some of the holes. These rails are made of good heavy duty metal. They're over a quarter inch thick so it's taking some effort to get through them with the drill, but it is quite possible with just a good quality metal drill bit. It is unfortunate that all the holes don't line up. I was only able to use two of the pre-drilled holes and I had to re-drill all the others. It's just the way the studs worked out in the wall as it goes over the door. They weren't all on that 16 inch center. So it's unfortunate, but not too big of a deal to re-drill those additional holes. Getting ready to drill the anchor holes in the wall for the rail. And so we put it up and we got it level. That's really important. It needs to be as level as possible so your door will roll properly on the rail. And then we transfer those holes once we had it good and level. Here I ran into a bit of a problem. Wouldn't you know it, there was a drywall screw in the exact place that I needed to drill. Fortunately, I was able to just remove the drywall screw and then drill in behind it. Now I'm ready to put the hardware on the rail itself. There's long lag screws that anchor it securely into the stud and there's spacers in between to hold the rail out from the wall the specified depth. I was a little concerned about this step in the process, just worried about the layout not working out somehow, but this all worked out really well. All the holes lined up and once I got the lag bolts in and tightened down properly, I was able to put a level back up there and check it out and it turned out really level and nice. Well, that really wasn't so bad. I was really intimidated by this process, but it went well. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it'd be. And now moving on to the entrance to the master bedroom. We're installing it on the living room side. So we're standing in the living room, installing it. This will lead into the master bedroom itself. Just doing our layout, getting it all level and checking out the spacing of the studs. And it looks like everything is going to work out with the layout. All the studs are on 16 inch centers and all the holes are going to work out. I'm really excited about this. Just doing some more double checking on the spacing, making sure everything is correct before I start drilling holes. The next step is to pre-drill the holes for the lag screws. So you're just going to pre-drill all the way into the stud so that the lag screws don't break out the wood when they go in. And now I'm ready to actually install it. I put on the hardware and held it up and it's really an easy matter to zip those lag screws in. Double checking the level, that all looks okay. Just going and tightening everything by hand. You don't want to get them too tight or you can actually damage the drywall. And then the next step is to put on the stops. The stops go on really fast and then it's ready to go. Well, I'm finally ready to start restoring these doors. I've really been looking forward to this process. I had a creative idea on this door to add some color to the space by sanding down the center panels and then dyeing them with dyes to add some color, kind of like a pinwheel pattern. So that's what I'm working on here. Unfortunately, it turned out laughably bad. We will give you a look at the end of how it turned out, but for now, suffice it to say, I went in a much more conservative direction for the final product. Sliding doors are interesting and in order to keep someone from being able to see into the room through the crack between the door and the door frame, the doors need to overlap the door frame by a considerable margin. And so these doors weren't wide enough for that by themselves. So I needed to add some additional boards to the outside to make them wider so that there weren't gaps that you could see through. So that's what I'm making here. I'm also making a board that will go on the bottom of the door and it will have a groove milled into it so that you can attach the bottom of the door and keep the door from swinging out at the base. These boards that I'm making are specific to each door and I'm getting them all perfectly dimensioned so that I'll be able to attach them to the doors after they're finished. Next up I sanded everything down to get it ready to receive the finish. For the finish, we decided to go with the blackening treatment that we've used elsewhere in the house. It was either that or try to match the color of the existing stain on the doors, which I didn't want to try to do. I haven't had much success in doing that. So I decided it would be better to go with a more contrasting tone like this black that goes with other elements in the home. And I thought that would look nicer overall. Once that was dry, I finished the wood with a good coat of tongue oil. Ready to work on the next door now. We decided to move the work table further into the shelter because it looked like it was going to rain. 
This door was in much better condition than the last one. It still had the hinges on it, so I just removed the hinges and started doing a little prep. One side of the door, the finish was actually in almost perfect condition. It must have been the interior of the door. And so that just needed a good cleaning, really didn't need any repair. I cleaned the surface real good with mineral spirits and then went back over it with some Danish oil to freshen it up. When that was done, we flipped the door over to work on the other side. This was the outside of the door and the finish was a little weathered and cracking in some areas. So I needed to sand some of it down. So I just selectively sanded the worst went back and did a little bit of hand sanding. After that, I blew out the dust and went back in with a stain that was very similar in color to stain the areas that I had sanded through the original stain surface. I had to do a little blending here. I used a blend of early American stain and red mahogany to match the tone just right. Once that was done, I finished it with a little bit of Danish oil. Next up, we moved on to prepping the door for installation. We decided to go ahead and put a plate on the side of the door to cover the previous holes that were there for the doorknob and to put a plate on each side so that it would match and was symmetrical. So I just made up some small plates out of some thin plywood and dyed them black. We flipped it over and mounted those plates on the other side as well and then we're ready to get on to installing those side pieces and bottom piece that I made. I'm starting with the bottom piece that I made. This already has the groove milled into it and I've pre-drilled all the holes so it's ready to go. I'm just applying some construction adhesive here and then I'll be screwing it into place. We'll be fabricating a U-shaped metal hook that I'll attach to the base of the wall that will come up into the groove that's milled into the bottom of this board and that's what will secure the base of the door and keep it from flopping out as the door is moved back and forth. You can't see it very well here, but the groove is about a quarter inch wide and about three quarters of an inch deep. And now I'm installing the side pieces. I just pre-drilled the holes for the screws in these sideboards so I don't split them out. And then I'm using a long cabinet screw to attach them. Cabinet screws work great here because they have a flat head that holds really well without trying to split the wood. And the head is also real shallow and I like the, the look of the exposed head on those. So those worked well to attach the side pieces. And now I'm just getting this last sideboard attached here. Didn't know how this would turn out, but we're actually are liking the look of this black against that dark mahogany. It goes with it, but adds a little bit of a contrast and interest, so I think it's working out all right. And now I'm getting ready to install the roller brackets on the door. Basically, the instructions give you a measurement to the first screw in that bracket, and so I'm just measuring down from the top of the door to the proper location for that first screw. Once I have that in place, I just put the bracket itself on and transferred holes to the second hole. There will be two bolts that go through to install each bracket. Getting ready to actually drill the holes in the door here. This is a little bit intimidating. I've doubled and triple checked everything because you only get one shot at this. It has to be right. I decided to go ahead and just clamp the bracket onto the door and drill through the holes in the bracket itself so I didn't mess this up. The correct location for the holes are already marked, so I just had to align the bracket with those holes, clamp it on, and drill through, and that worked out really good. I'm now ready to install the bracket on the door. It came with a selection of bolts that are different lengths for different thicknesses of doors, and the nut that shows on the living side of the door is a nice cap head nut. Well, that fit great, and so I'm kind of repeating the process on the other side now. We do really like this hardware that came with this set. It's good, thick metal, and we like the big wheels. So they have different wheel options. And so since this wheel shows, we, we wanted the kind of industrial look. So we went with the nice big wheel that has the spokes in the wheel that show. I think it'll be a nice look in the home. The last thing to install was these little plastic pieces. So these are bump guards to keep the door from being derailed if it was like slammed one way or the other. And so I wasn't quite sure how to install these and I went ahead and put them on the, the way that made sense to me just to see if that would work. And so with those installed, we're ready to do a test fit. Well, it's ready for the test fit. April and I are carrying it over. This door is actually quite heavy and seemed like a long trip over from the barn, but we carried it in and we're ready to try putting it up on the rail. You should be able to just lift it on and hook those wheels in and kind of swing it down in, but we couldn't get it to go. We think those bumpers that I put on those little plastic pieces are interfering. They seem to be in the way, so I decided to go ahead and remove those. So they just screw in with the Phillips head uh, screw, so I was able to just remove those real quick. 
and give it another try. So second try here, still can't quite get it. There's a, a funny little lip in this door. It's just the way the door was made. I didn't cut it off, decided to just work with it. Anyway, it's not fitting, so we decided to take the door stop off and come in from the end. And so that worked, we were able to get it on the rail. This is just a test fit to see how the door hangs, how it aligns in the door frame, and how it all works. It's moving back and forth really easy. Love the bearings on these wheels, they're really smooth. But I do think I'm going to have to make a little bit of adjustment to the way it hangs. In our spare time, we've been searching for furnishings and rugs and just accents for the home, uh, window treatments, and we'll show you some more about that in the next video. We brought the door outside and put it on a little patio table that we had nearby and went about making some adjustments. I had to remove the bracket and drill out the holes to create some space to adjust the height of that bracket to make the door hang just a little bit differently than it was. Once I did that and made those adjustments, I was ready to move on to the door handle. We're mounting the door handle over one of those black plywood plates that we'd put on. I think this is going to work real nice. It's got a handle that sticks out on one side, and then on the back side there's a flat, flush plate that you can get your fingers in to move, but that doesn't take up a lot of space on the back side. The door handle was a fairly straightforward installation, just had to drill the two holes. Unfortunately, this door is extra thick. It's a thick exterior door to begin with, and then these two little plates that I put on add some additional thickness, and so as a consequence, the bolts weren't long enough to use those flat washer bases that it came with that are under April's arm there. I had to remove those in order to create some additional space so that the bolts would be long enough. Anyway, in the end, we got it mounted and it looks nice. We also purchased a lock for this door so that we'd be able to lock the door for privacy since it's in the master bedroom. And I took it out to look at it and kind of get it figured out. But I realized we'd have to do it in place once it's hung in the house. And then we finished up our preparations by applying a coat of wax to the door, mostly to even out the sheen. The sheen was a little bit uneven before and this gives it a nice even matte sheen. And then it also protects the door as well. And we're ready to bring the door in to hang it for the final time here. So we're Putting it on, it actually goes on properly now, sliding back and forth nice. It's hanging better, but I needed to like make a little bit of adjustment, so I'm just loosening up those bolts and moving the door a little bit and then tighten it back up, and it's hanging nicely. I think we're good to go here. Now that it's in place, we can install the door lock. I've never installed one of these. It's a totally different type of lock than I've ever used before, and so it took a while to figure out how it worked. Once I thought I had it figured out pretty well, we decided to install it up high on the door so that it wouldn't be easily accessible by children. And the first thing that I needed to do was to drill a large hole in the door. So I had to go outside and find a good sized hole saw that was the right size and, and put a big hole in the door, which was a bit messy. As we were working on this, it was getting dark outside and we noticed we had a beautiful moonrise. So April had to get a shot of the moon coming up over the horizon. It's really gorgeous. So now I have the receiver mounted to the door and I have to mount the latch itself, the locking mechanism, to the frame of the door. So it took a bit of doing and figuring, but I finally figured out the spacing and the location of that. I'm, I'm opening it and closing it. It has a very satisfying click when you open and close it. And I'm just doing some test fitting here. It works real nice. You just pull back on the mechanism, then it snaps forward into the lock. This lock is really fun to use, it works great, and there is a way that you can open it from the outside if someone accidentally locks themselves in. The next step was to go over to the shop to create a bracket that would fit inside that groove I made in that bottom board and secure the bottom of the door to keep it from swinging out. I'm using a piece of one inch wide flat bar stock for this, an eighth of an inch thick, and it just needs two bins to create a U-shape so that I'll be able to attach it on the wall at the very base of the door and it'll stick out and then come back up into that groove in that board that I created on the bottom of the door. The door slide set came with its own bracket for this, but it was a plastic piece that was meant to be attached to the floor. You had to drill holes in your floor and attach it to the floor, and that just wouldn't work for us since we have these earthen floors. So I had to come up with my own design that we screw into the wall, at the base of the wall, that would do the same job. I have it bent now, and now I'm just pre-drilling a couple of holes in it so that I can screw it into the wall. You can see here on this paper here, the drawings that I made, it took a little bit of figuring to get this right. I, I wanted to 
make sure it was exactly the right size so that it comes out the right distance and grabs the door in the right place. So I think I've got it all right. And here's the finished product. We'll go over to the house and see how it looks. So I went ahead and set this little bracket in place just to see if it looked like it was going to work right. And it does. You can see a little wing on the bottom of that board. So that board that I made for the bottom, I made a couple of inches extra long so that it would stick out on one side. And that's so that when the door is in the fully closed position, it still has plenty of contact with this bracket. And then when it's fully open, it still has plenty of contact. So I just wanted to have a wider range of motion on the door than you would normally be able to get using the traditional bracket. And so by making that baseboard a little longer, I got a wider range of motion on the door. I had to temporarily move the stop over so that I could move the door fully out of the way so that I could get the screws in to attach this bracket. Once that was done, I moved it back in place and reset my stops. These stops just have a couple of set screws on the edge that you need to loosen or tighten. You have one on either side and that controls exactly the position that the door operates in, where it closes and where it stops. And so it's fun to be able to set that exactly where you want it. We have it set to where once the door is open, it's fully out of the way of the door and the entire door frame is exposed. It's crazy how easy this thing rolls. Uh, these bearings are wonderful. You know, this is a really heavy door. It's a solid wood exterior door and it moves so easy. You can just give it a little push and it just keeps rolling. It's kind of fun and almost a little scary how easy this door rolls. Now we're moving back to the door for the master bath. We've already done the other side, but the side that you can see showing here was painted originally. And I didn't want to try to strip the paint, so we decided to just go ahead and paint over it with a nice white paint. So this is the same white paint that we used on the antique doors on the other side of the house. And this side of the door will face the master bathroom itself, and so it'll, I think it'll go really well. So from the master bedroom, you'll see the dark mahogany stain, but from the bathroom, you'll see the painted side. So we just painted this side with that nice enamel white that's actually made for cabinets so it dries to a nice hard surface and should wear very well. We let that dry and then the next step was to put on these pieces that I had milled to get the door to the correct size. You can see how this baseboard sticks out a little bit extra on one side. It's the same as the other door. It has a little wing that sticks out a couple of extra inches to allow for extra range of motion. I wanted that extra range of motion so that the door could be removed completely to the side and you get the full width of the door frame exposed. Part of that was just for the look and part of that was so that we have the full handicap access with that 36 inches of width all the way into the master bedroom, into the master bathroom. We don't need the handicap. Hopefully we'll, we'll never need to have a handicap access to it, but it's better to put it in now than it would be later. So it's just kind of a just in case thing. Seems like a good idea. It's not hard to do at this point, but it would be really hard to do later. Another thing that we liked about these rolling doors is just the appearance. We like the metal that it brings into the house. We love the look of the big rollers and the brackets. It just brings an industrial feel to it that we love and that goes really well with our home. As I was mounting these brackets, I realized that I had got this one a little bit crooked. I don't know how it happened. It's frustrating, but I need to fix it because it looks bad. So I went ahead and took it off and re-drilled the holes with a little bit bigger drill bit to give myself a little bit of play in order to make that adjustment. And that wasn't quite enough. I still couldn't quite get it straight on how I got it so far off. But I ended up having to take it off again and go with a little bit bigger drill bit and create myself a little bit more room. Finally, I got it enough room, enough play in the bolt holes that I could get it straight. And then I had to be careful to get it to the right height because that's a really critical adjustment there. So I had to play with that, get it adjusted just right. But I finally got it. Next, I brought my staple gun over to staple those plates that I'd made. I painted them white for this side so it matched the door. Black on the other side. Once I got those stapled and attached, we flipped the door over and I started mounting the handle. This handle set did not come with the rest of the hardware. It was a separate purchase. And there's a lot of different styles out there, but this one appealed to us because it's fairly large and goes well on a large door and it's just a simple modern design. Once that was installed, we decided to go ahead and give the whole door a coat of wax while we had it here in a convenient location. We're just using a clear paste wax for this and really like the look that the wax gives to the door. It just evens out the tone nicely. 
April and I lug the door over to the house. We're bringing it inside to set it in place and see how it goes. This one went right in, didn't require any adjustment, hung just perfect the first time, really happy about it. Another thing that we really love about these sliding doors is the space saving aspect. And that's really why we originally included these in the design is because you don't have that all the space that's consumed by leaving enough room to swing open a really large door. These just go to the side and they don't take up any living space. So these are really nice, low profile. They free up a lot of living space and they look really nice. We're really glad that we decided to install these. They were intimidating at first. We'd never done it. It seemed like a difficult project, but it, it ended up not being too bad. And we really love the result. These doors are one of our favorite features of the home. They go well with the home. They're a nice decorative element. Thanks for watching. And as promised, here's a look at my failed creative idea. This is a little embarrassing, but <laughs> it was so bad that we had to show you. So here's my attempt at a colorful pinwheel pattern that ended up looking like a cross between a Halloween door and a kindergartner's school door. Anyway, I don't know what had happened here, but it's so bad that it's fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.